Okay, it's my turn on Tag Team Tuesday, and we're going to be working with a couple of um, items from the Dollar Tree. You guys seen these, these Jenga blocks? It's Dollar Tree's version of Jenga. Well, I went ahead and I made little pumpkins. Can you see them? Oh, thanks, Rob. <laughs> Rob approved my background. That's a plus. Yay. All right, so we're going to be working with these. Now, to make these, what I did was I took three and glued them across, okay, and then two on top. And I'll tell you what, they stick really good and really quick with hot glue. Hi, Lynn. So, we've got those we're going to put on our, I'm doing a grapevine wreath, and I've put some really old um, chicken wire on the back because, and let me see if I can find it here, I also decided to work with some of the uh, dice, all right? Now, what everybody does with the dice is they all paint them and they use them as a whole. Well, to me, they were just too big, too wide. So I took them and cut them in half and painted them. Now, when I cut them in half, I thought, okay, they've got to be straight. I can cut right down the center of the four dots. No. <laughs> As you can see, I get two different heights. So the next pair, I did the same. So I'd have a lower and a higher one. But I painted them with chalk paint. There's three layers of chalk paint. Then I kind of distressed them. Hello, Peggy. I kind of distressed them with brown paint just to make them look bold. And then I took my brother scanning cut, which is just like a cricket, and I typed out the word fall and then just put them right on top there. So I already decided that this is a small wreath, which some of the items, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the owl or the scarecrow, but I wanted it on a smaller scale. So that's why I chose this size wreath. And this is a 13 inch grapevine. Now what I'm going to do with the blocks, can you all see that everything okay? What do you think of my new, my new backdrop and everything? I did a video last night and I premiered it um, showing you some behind the scenes ideas for my ring light with microphone, um, this curtain, curtain rod my um, desk, well, it's a table with a rolling shelf underneath. Um, I did put it on, <laughs> Lynn wants the owl. Okay, we'll see if we can get the owl in there, Lynn. Um, I went and just gave everybody a bunch of tips, especially for those that are going um, and doing lives on YouTube and Facebook, because on Facebook, there are certain words we can't say. But this now is in my shop. If you have a business where you do outdoor craft fairs, indoor craft fairs, or you just want to hang this on your backdrop, I now make these garden flags with your logo on them. And then everything else is on there for you. Okay? Thank you. So, I figured the best way to do this is I'm going to take a narrow piece of ribbon and I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to put this down the back here. I'm going to glue it so I have something a little more substantial to glue to than just the, um, the uh, chicken wire and because it's only one and a half you're not really going to see it. I know. I got a bunch of them, Jeanette. I did, in fact, that one's from last year. So, 
I got them with the idea I was going to use it and then never used it. I think it'll go straight to the wreath base because then I've got it anchored there too. And that's just a little extra support. Yeah, I found this really great um, ring light with the microphone already attached. So I, I ended up showing that on the live, on the premiere, on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Also, I put on there this week, or last week, um, the new signs. And I have a contest going, but you have to go on to YouTube and you have to vote for your favorite sign. And then I will do a drawing and I'm going to give away a sign. Hey, Will. Didn't really do a great job on her candy cane. That was so cute. And those new signs were adorable. Absolutely adorable. I'm just running this piece of ribbon down the back here so I have something more substantial to um, glue my dice. I wanted to make this kind of look farmhouse and I think I'll be able to accomplish that with with the design and the color choices. Trying not to burn my fingers. All right, so we've got that and it's a little crooked. <laughs> Let's straighten it out. There we go, that's better. Still, I think, over a little more. There we go. Hey, Carol. So, we're going to start with the one at the top, the F for fall. And when I did these, I got this trick from Levon. When I did these, I actually glued one of these skewer sticks from the Dollar Tree to the back of it. So I was able to paint it and hold it in my hand and not get paint all over myself. Then at the end, I just cut them off and then just had to go ahead and paint just the area where this was sitting. Much easier to work with. This is still a little bit crooked. I'm going to move it up a little bit. So I definitely, definitely like that idea. I even did it with the um, pumpkins. But I left it attached because I wasn't sure if I was going to use these as picks or whatever. But what I did with the pumpkins, I actually found the cinnamon sticks that I couldn't find last week for the apple basket I did. I found them. So I broke them up and I glued them to the top of the little wooden skewer. And my God, they smell amazing. They really do. Still crooked. What did I do? Went the wrong way? Come on now. There. All right. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of glue on this and see. It's not gonna. It's not gonna look bad if that little bit shows at the top. So let's get some glue on here and get these babies glued down. I want to go up as high as I can. And boy, the, these blocks, these four blocks just fit in here perfect. I need another glue stick. And in my video on YouTube, I also linked all the equipment that I talked about and where to get it. Like where I got the, um, these are fabric shower curtains and where I got the curtain rod and the table or the shelving unit, everything. All right. And we've got our letter A. Thank you, LaVon. Miss you. Been thinking about you all day. My birthday is always a rough, a rough day. Because if I would have known 
on my birthday four years ago that I only had a week left with my mom, there would have been a lot of things I would have done differently. So, And then we'll go with the last L. And see, they all fit in here really nice and snug. Let's put a little more on there. But my grandson came over today, and he's a, he's a joy. Makes you forget a lot of things. Brings a smile to your face. So that was important. And one more. So again, these are just the Dollar Tree dice cut in half, painted with chalk paint three times, then distressed with a little bit of darker paint. Yeah, didn't think you needed me wallowing. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. There's a bunch of spider webs here. Okay. So now, I showed you how I did the pumpkins with the five little Jenga blocks, how I painted them and distressed them. I took this little green rope that I had and twirled it around a pencil and used a little bit of Mod Podge. And these geranium leaves are like the closest thing that I had to um, a pumpkin leaf, a pumpkin vine. So we're just going to glue a few of these on. And with that cinnamon stick at the top, oh my gosh, they smell so good. So I have the other ones here to do. Get a little cleaned up here. And Let's see, we'll do these first. Two, three, five. There we go, I knew I had five. Some of them are still sticking together pretty good. And I just used Mod Podge with those. They do, they do take your mind off a lot. <laughs> he was my saving grace today, that's for sure. Smiles. Awesome little guy. They all are. But it's just a blessing to have some so close and be able to spend time with them. And then we'll get this in here. Have any of you worked with the Jenga blocks before? Have you tried making anything with them? I've seen they they made um, glue gun holders <laughs> with them. little um, little wagons. Um, what else did they see? Very versatile. Frames, you can make a frame with them. I'm doing so good here, I'm not burning my finger. So, what do you think of my new area? Is the sound better? The lighting better? Did you watch my video? on YouTube. It's tips and tricks. Hi Thelma, how are you? Hugs to my babies. Mm. 
We are working with the Jenga blocks. I made little pumpkins out of them. So now we're just gluing the leaves on them and the little curly vine that I made out of just string, wrapped it around a pencil and um, put a little Mod Podge on it. Got one more to go here. I think I'll put this leaf on this side. It smells awesome with the little piece of cinnamon stick on the top of the pumpkin. I mean, you all know how I looked for that thing last week and could not find it. And then when I wasn't looking for it this week, I found them. It's my life. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I have these, I have this. I want to put a little bow and I picked out three colors in one and a half inch that I think I'm gonna use. Now, who is it? Can you come closer? You sure can. Let me see if I can get this to work on. How's that? Is that better? was it that wanted the owl? <laughs> I need to go back. Was it Jeanette? No, it wasn't Jeanette. It was Lynn. Lynn wanted the owl. All right. So I thought it would be cute is to kind of put these around and about on here, on this side. Um... Should glue onto here really well. I don't know, maybe five is too much. Maybe we'll just try three first. Thank you. It was Lynn. <laughs> me, me. And the owl, the owl, the owl. All right. And his hat kind of matches, so. All right, I think we'll put him down here, and then we'll put our bow right here. And if need be, I have some greenery to throw in there. So I think that's how we'll do it. So we don't need all five, because this is a small one. This is only 13 inches. So I think I'm gonna go with a plaid on the bottom first, and I'm just gonna do a simple hand bow. Because, like I said, we don't need a real big one. So I think I'm only going to do like three loops. And then I have a few other ideas to show you with the blocks. I have some new signs to show you. I have a sneak peek at tomorrow's live already. And I kind of want your opinion on what you think of them because I may make them as a kit. Mm -hmm. So I've got a plaid bow on the bottom. I've got my favorite farmhouse one next. And then this one that has pumpkins and gourds. Now, where are my this I need? And we need a zip tie. I 
thought they were right here. They were. I know they were. I got blue brown. Yep. of my favorite stuff, tinsel tie. That's awesome, Jeanette. Your signs are looking good, too. This kit's going to be a little different. And I think you'll all agree with me, I hope. So I'm going to put this like up here and I can take it right through the chicken wire. Actually, I'll go right down through the grapevine. Y'all can see good, right? Oh, that is a good picture. Thank you. Kind of disguise it through there. It was a little more tinsel tie than we needed, but that's okay. I know, my scissors are overkill. But again, you don't need a big bow for this. And I have a few signs to show you. So... Let's get our bow kind of shaped a little bit better here. I may not leave the tails this long because I might not need them that long. shorten them a lot right here because they're interfering with the word fall and that's not very straight there we go and let's straighten this a little so far. Now, I think I can go even a little bit shorter on this one and the one up top. And it worked out good because that ribbon is going up in the direction of the, 
the print is right. So I like that. When my print is in the right direction. There we go. All right. All right. So I think we're going to put our owl right here. So let's see if he'll just sit there with glue. Thank you, Mimi. <laughs> Appreciate it. You should adhere pretty good with this fabric. Sorry if I'm burning your butt, little good buddy. I think I'll give this to my daughter-in-law. She just loves owls, and I think she would enjoy it. She likes handmade stuff. All right, then we're going to put our pumpkins down the side here. And let's see, I might need a little... Just a little pop of color in here. Just going to dry fit it right now to see if that's what I want. some boxwood too. I have some leaves. Not liking the leaves. I think just the greenery. Does it? Really? It looks like I'm downstairs. The sound is better up here. I know that much. There, I kind of like the contrast of these two together. So I think we'll go that route. Believe me, I'm upstairs. <laughs> I know because when I did my video last night, my husband was finishing up the dishes and all you could hear was clanging the dishes during the video. So... He's very helpful, but I did not want dishes in the video. But I think there's enough information in there that if anybody's going live, they'll know how and what equipment will work best. So. Oh, but this is a different curtain. These were curtains I had in my classroom. These were not, this curtain was up downstairs, which I realized um, wasn't, um, it wasn't reflecting the light as well. Now I did some research and it said that if you use a bolder, bigger pattern, it'll work better for you. A small pattern will not work for you. So you want something bright, right and bold. So here we go so far. So when I decided I was gonna go with this, I even contacted one of my puppy parents because he does videos and commercials and such and he definitely agreed that this was a winner so i have it on professional authority <laughs> that it's it's a keeper yes um, I go into detail about the ring light with the microphone and not having to plug those earphones into my um, 
into my phone, which I don't know how many times you go to do a live and your phone's dying and then you can't go live because your phone's not working. So that ring light, um, the microphone, iPhone setup, everything, that works really well. I'm really pleased with that. I did put all the links in there to all the equipment I spoke about. Um, the only thing I couldn't find was the Walmart. This is an 84 inch curtain rod. I wanted it to span past my table. And it's one that you usually hang on the wall. And this we hung on the ceiling. So there was an alteration to that that we had to make in order to um, get it to stay, which it was just a matter of drilling a, a little hole in the curtain rod itself. So, but I think I would think about these, Willie, for your, uh, your beautiful shelving unit, <laughs> because every time you go on, somebody has to know where you got that. And it's, it's a distraction from what you're doing. So it might be something you want to think about. Yeah, Rob was awesome. I know, and I've got some more ideas for the Jenga blocks. This was just one of them. So, as soon as we get done here, I'll show you the other ideas. They even use them to make um, a glue gun holder out of them. That was too much glue in for me. <laughs> So let's see, that's going that way, so we want this to kind of go this way. I think right there is good. Oh my gosh, the cinnamon smells so good. That's what I used for the top stem, was um, the cinnamon. I don't need it. know if I need any of this in there. Well, let's see. No, it's clashing. All right, we could if we wanted even put some, I did have some Dollar Tree flowers. We don't usually buy them anymore. Oh, I thought that was going for my toe, but it didn't. Yay! Don't want to be injured today. <laughs> so in this wreath, Dollar Tree, we've got the owl, we've got the dice, we've got the uh, Jenga blocks. And, and this. Kind of makes it look like he's sitting in a nest here, but it kind of takes away from the letter L. So maybe we'll just stagger them a little bit. I don't know. I'll have to look back at it. Let's go just a little bit higher. What do you think? With or without the sunflowers?
Hi, Ginger. Ginger is one of my precious puppies. I think this is too much. Maybe just one, like right to the side here. What do you think of it, with one or three? Thank you. Or do you think it needs two more pumpkins? What's your thoughts? Just like that? At least one, yeah. I think so. We've got the colors in the bow to match the owl and the pumpkins. Then I have this. And what I thought I'd do is not this and attach it to here to make it look real rustic. Sunflowers, you think with the yellow one? See, I, I think the yellow kind of washes out the owl. I think the orange looks better. Or were you talking the orange sunflowers? And if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to use the owl. You could use the little scarecrow that they sell. Or they have these little scarecrows too that you can add to your bows. Um, there's some of this. That's what I think we need. Some straw. Just a little throughout here. That's what I'm looking for. Just to really give it that look of fall. These make really great glue pushers. I think this kind of finishes it off. much. Okay. There. What I'll do with this is I will use a piece of this to tie it to the wreath. That way I'm getting all of it together. I think that'll work. And then I can pull it up so it's all, still looks kind of farmhouse, but kind of keeping it together. Okay, gonna knot this. Well, that didn't work. Pulled it too tight. Okay, be gentle. <laughs> Add this. There's a loose piece under here. 
There we go. Want to just tie it in a knot. Kind of give it more rustic look. I actually had used some of this last year wound up for um, a bird's nest. So See, then you have a little control over where it, it lays and how full you want it. And then we'll put the last piece like right up in here. This stuff can get out of control really fast. <laughs> There is some wire here that the wreath was made with. This is an older one. I just like the size of this one because I felt it um, fit real nice with the blocks. Now I could have used the blocks down the side, but I wanted to make the blocks like the main focal point. That's why I went down the middle with them. You can do it however. And it was still deep enough that if you wanted to use these blocks in here at full size, you could. Okay, just trim some of this. There we go. Now this is looking a little peaked right here. So I'm going to take another piece and I'm going to actually tie it around this piece and bring it down to make it look a little fuller at the bottom. See, I can always go back and add there. And thinking, do I need to add a little? I'm going to add a little cascading down from the bow on this side too. Why not? We have it. Might as well use it. Then I will show you the other things that you can do with the Jenga blocks. It seems there's a lot of stuff out there, but it seems like everybody's kind of doing the same thing. So we could even stick some of this in our bow too. I always like doing that too. So this I'm actually going to go under here and take a branch and take part of it under the branch so I can just tie it in place. I think that's what, what it needed. It needed just a little, little bit of it in there. Now, I'm going to spot it with glue because it doesn't feel secure enough to me. Now, let's see. Do I want to put any in the bow? I think 
I'm going to tie it in a bow and put the bow in the middle. Thank you. I wanted it to look rustic and I think I think we've achieved that. But I want to this isn't the way I want it. Come on. Here. Start with a lighter piece. There we go. There. I just want to make a little bow. If you all wouldn't mind those three words, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. There, see? Just a little touch of it right in the middle. This is a little too long. I think we're good. What do you think? Would you know it was from the Dollar Tree? Most of the items? That's what I want to know. I, I do like their signs and such, but I feel like they warp really bad. So I try to stay away from them. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do it now, but my plan is to attach this as the hanger to make it look more rustic. So that's the plan with that. Meantime, let's get rid of all this goopy stuff. I really appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. Oops, the posy went in the trash. We need that posy. All right, now, these were a few things that I also found. All right, so we've got our pumpkins out of the Jenga block. But now, I have one Jenga block. It is painted in white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little Santa ornament out of him. That's his scarf. This is going to be the hanger. And I didn't bring my fine tip marker, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little face on there, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, a little carrot nose, and then you've got a cute little snowman ornament, and they make li cute little wreath attachments too. Like you can make a pick of these, put them in a real pretty pick, and have three of them in there jetting up from it. Wouldn't that be cute? Thank you, Will. Vicki, oh, you're talking about the... No, I did not. I'll look for it. Vicki, I did a custom sign for Vicki. Now, I don't know if you're like me. I never never seriously never throw out my old Christmas cards because look at this you can make a frame out of these Jenga blocks let's go ahead and trim him I do not want to use these scissors we want to use the ones that just missed my toe I'm going to trim a little bit of this off Then we are going to glue this to the Jenga blocks 
and look you got a cute little sign. Thank you, Levi. Now this would be cute hanging or sitting on your table at Christmas time. And I'll show you in a minute what you can use. I, I'm sorry, I just, I absolutely adore snowmen. They're like my favorite next to gnomes. All right, so I've got that on there. Then you go to any thrift store or dollar store, you can find these, okay? These are little plate holders. Wouldn't that look cute with some greenery around it sitting on your table? And these will look cute on the um, Christmas tree. I have some flat jute here. I could add that on. I could paint this frame. So that's another idea you can do with the Jenga blocks. So we made pumpkins. We made a fall sign for the middle of the wreath out of um, the dice cut in half. You do not have to use a full dice, full die. So, and so we have this from the Dollar Tree. We have the Jenga blocks. We have the dice, all from the Dollar Tree, and the owl and the sunflower. Now, this is something else you can add too. Okay, they have these. They come in a package of three. One says welcome. One says, I think, thanks, and the other says harvest. You know, you can paint these a different color, and you can put these on your wreaths also. Or look, if you had the one that said, you know, I'm sure they'll come out with some at Christmas time. Wouldn't that look cute across there to make a frame? Or, you know, put your picture of your grandchildren in there, thankful, and then have the grandchildren in there. So that's just a few ideas. Then I'll show you, well, this, this started out as a request from Dawn <laughs> and I liked it so much. I kind of went a little nutso on it. Yeah, right? This one is Santa's elves. So you got the workbench over here with all the toys and the elves. So that's one of the newest ones. This is now in my Etsy shop. This now is in my Etsy shop if you think you want to promote your business. Then we have, now this is welcome to, to our gnome. We have it in circle and we have it in rectangle. Okay. But notice the green and red border. All right, because it also comes in the white, red, and green, too. So I'll hold these up. Isn't he cute? Oh, I got him upside down. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to my gnome, to our gnome. And you can see here the difference in the borders. There's a lot of ribbon out there that this will work with. All right. Then I will show you what we're gonna be working on tomorrow. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna set it up just yet. Aw, thanks for the hearts. Thank you very much. I was inspired by one of my signs to come up with, this is the one I have, it says welcome fall. This is my scarecrow sign. All right. As most of you know, I've been printing my own fabric. All right, check this out. I have actually printed the scarecrow's face 
not only did I print him, but I made him into a wreath attachment. Now, if I were to sell this, how would you buy it? Would you want it to come as a kit where you put it together? Or would you want them as already put together? There's going to be different colored hats. Burlap is in high demand right now. You can't get it. You can't get great colors. So I used um, that kind of stiff felt for the hat. But I have orange, I have green, I have red, and all of which will go with this. Now, I haven't, and I plan on it tomorrow, making a hat to match the one in there, but I kind of like this one too. So, would you buy it as a kit to make it yourself, or would you buy it already made? Or do you think I should list it both ways? This is the wreath we're going to be working on tomorrow for this sign. So I'm going to make a few more of these and we'll be placing those on the wreath. You've got burgundy in here. You've got green. You've got blue. You've got black. You've got yellow. You've got the moon. Which way would you, which way would you most like it? See, it comes like this. These are the faces. These are printed by me on my um, machine, on my heat press. Already made, okay? Already made. He is nine inches tall. His face is like five inches. I have a few different um, facial expressions I can put on there too. Thelmas is already made. All right. I thought there might be some do-it-yourselfers out there that wouldn't mind like getting all the all the stuff in a kit to make it make it themselves. But he was fun because we had to play with the size for a while and everything. <laughs> But I think he's cute. I think he's going to look so cute once I get the hat matched. Won't he? Oh, can somebody tell me how to get those dirty old men to stop following me on Instagram? Gosh, they are just relentless. I wish they would find somebody and leave the married women alone. <laughs> All right, so that's what we're working on tomorrow at 2. Thank you for joining Willie and I tonight for Tag Team Tuesday. I don't know what we'll do next week, but as always, we come up with something. We wing it, don't we, Willie? I will post a link to my Etsy shop. All the signs are in my Etsy shop tonight. Even the, um, the, the custom flag. That's already in there. <laughs> we'll come up with something. We always do. But I hope I gave you a few ideas. I mean, there's what? Like 36 blocks in here. Two, four. Took 12 to make this frame. And this frame is like a five by seven. And of course they, again, make little cute little ornaments, little snowman ornaments, and it takes five to make a pumpkin. So you got some Jenga ideas. I guess they're not called Jenga. Tumbling tower game is what they call it. All right, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> it's a long day when you get up at five o'clock. It really is. All right, thanks for joining us tonight and look forward to seeing you tomorrow around too. Have a great evening, thank you.